Hello, Peter. Good morning, Fred. You know, I just noticed when I tried to save a web link and author, nothing happened. Mark Anderson said something similar. Let me just try something here. Okay, so it's not just me then. Because I was trying to try to do the little bio thing like you asked for, and I went to add the web link to my homepage, and I did the control K, got the web link form, typed in the URL, and hit save, and it was just frozen on the dialog open with the save button visible. Right. I hate being the one who trips onto all these bugs. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, let me see if uh, Mark is joining us. Hi, Rafael, how you doing? Hey, Peter. Doing pretty good myself. It's a rainy day over here. Yeah, today's a little bit sunny, but yesterday it was extremely cold. What does extremely wrong? cold mean? It was 16 degrees, bro. Okay. <laughs> That's what we consider when it starts being warm after winter, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Hey, here. Fahrenheit or Celsius, Ravel? Celsius, Celsius. Who uses Fahrenheit? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just crazy angry there now. Huh? How much is 28 degrees? No, I'm going to try to eat. Oh, Siri. She won't. Do, uh, hang on one second. How much is 28 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Uh, 82.4. Yeah, it's 19 today. Right, okay, so I'm going to start with something really fascinating today. We're going to make Ooh. a web link because both Mark and uh, Peter had problems. So here's the thing I'm trying to find out. So I copy the link, then I go to author. And if I just want the link to just be there, I just do paste and space. Now it's a link. Nice. If I wanted to have it, Thank you. Associated with a word, I do select that word, command K, and now it's a link. Mm, very, so, very. Thank you. So, Peter, where was the problem? Uh, what did okay, it uh, here's what you try. Uh, try selecting the word implementations now. No, that's a heading. Yeah, any word, any word, some new word. Okay. Okay. Now, here's what you do. Go to the context pop-up menu. Okay, now collect, select web link. Okay, do it with nothing on the clipboard at the time. I didn't have anything on the clipboard. I was trying to type in the URL directly with an empty clipboard. Yeah, uh, that's what I hit. Okay, that's where I was when nothing happened after I typed it in. I hit save Okay, and it was full. It did actually save, but the save dialog box didn't get removed. Okay. So. This is how I'll add that as a bug. So I'll call it I, uh, adding links. Obviously like people. Peter, I'd, I'd obviously sort of sent a comment earlier, I was doing something and, and, and my reflection was more that this is ridiculous. I should know how to do it. I'm my, and for some reason, uh, I think the web link, when I tried it, seemed to be, I think, ah, oh, I know one of the things is I looked at the context menu and for the, it looked as though the shortcut was sort of grayed out. So I thought, okay, is that telling me that I can't make a web link this way? I was sort of expecting to see a box. I, but I'm reflecting on the fact that what I'm showing is my habits were acquired under older systems. I totally see what um, uh, Freud's just demonstrated. And I'm when I expect it, I'm used to it. But what I think I just taught myself is when I open up, you know, I just dashed into author to do something. Clearly, it's not my baseline learned way of doing this. And I'm not saying that's good. Um, what I take away from it is the adoption problem. <laughs> you know, yeah, how no, you shift people gently forward. 
Yeah, well, absolutely. But but you know, the thing is, yeah, no, I, I, I also reflect. Absolutely. I just reflect on years of you know uh, sort of helping people, and of course, the temptation is always to start by someone says, you know, after they try these things, well, you're doing it wrong, which always helps with you know <laughs> them adopting a new idea. So we have we have a problem here that I think is pertinent for all of us, and that is. We discussed doing a kind of a map thing of our community last time, right? Oh yeah, sorry, you weren't there, Raphael. You missed a fun-filled, vodka-fueled party on Friday. So here's the problem. Um, Mark has sent me this, right? And that doesn't map. So I think that's a very useful case study. So I'm, I'm just going to now, on here, make Mark Anderson. So if I now do command D for definition, I just have a plain text box. And then I can call him a person, I guess. And then a related website or more. But all of this um, organized information here isn't, um, there, there are, I have no fields for it. I, I, I'll admit I forgot what I was supposed to do. I just knew that I had to do some homework. And I... <laughs> No, no, but what you've done is really good and useful. You're given structured data, but mm -hmm. the system doesn't know how to handle that. So I thought it could be useful you. for us to look at it together, right? So th this last bit here, other, fair enough. But actually, let's see what happens. I'm going to call you a person. And you don't have any websites here, so boom. So uh, hang on, I have to move the uh, Zoom thing. So if we go into glossary, you are here. So I'm just going to call it ways. And we don't need to have everything on here. So we're going to this mm. view. What are we going to define ways? Well, it's web and internet science group. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to do more. Here we call it organization, right? Yeah. So now, ah, it works. So here we have a problem immediately. That isn't a good sentence. So I go back here and affiliation. You, you see, on a concept map, you would have a link type kind of thing or whatever. Um, this yeah. is not it. So we have to do something like, should we maybe have affiliation in front of all of these? So that clicking gives us this or affiliated with? Uh, probably affiliated with. I mean, yeah, if you were thinking of it in terms of like a linked label, it, I guess it would be affiliated with, um, you know, works at that same sort of thing. Um, hey, Fred, um, you have the, the, the plus button on the bottom right. For links, um, yeah. Yeah, for, for, for links. Um, can that just be a plus for definition and you add definitions and then you can add a definition for affiliated with a definition for skills a definition for projects you just keep adding you can do that but the thing is um I, I, at this point link types are not so oh god i hate the term surfaced in the sense of i don't want the user to have to think about them the only reason mm -hmm. i'm editing it in front of you guys now is because of how this reads because he just, when you just write it as a list, the fact that this is this isn't useful. So, so mm. yeah, I mean, th th there is definitely. Because if, if I feel the, the problem is in the big block of text, if you have different things happening inside the block of text, you need the block to identify what's happening. And if you have it as individual elements by adding them individually, then you could specify them as you add. I, I'm does a, that make sense? Yes, it absolutely does. But my concern is that that make, make this seem very technical and very exact. So it's supposed yeah, to be I, I, just Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, for the, for the new adopter and the person you're trying to do, um, 
if we prod them too far to sort of towards structured <laughs> data, their minds will explode and they will march away rapidly. Um, yes, yeah, so I probably could have structured this better if I was thinking of immediately using it in a map. Um, I was just capturing. But in a sense, th 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 this is actually, it's good that you sort of did this because one of the things is, so one of, one of the sort of, tutorials one needs coming to this fresh is so it's one thing to see the video the sort of demo so okay you can do this um but the the sort of the 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 exploratory demo alongside it says to get it to do this you want to think about the following things and that doesn't have to be, uh, be a lesson in in concept maps or something and formal um, structured data but it's sense of to see something, to see, to find it, uh, it, it's basically got to be addressable. And I wouldn't use that term either, but that's what we're teaching them to do. And this is something that I've really noticed recently in helping uh, some, some new and struggling Tinderbox users um, who haven't got past having notes with just text in it. And that, because their presumption is what you do, especially infantilized by the new world of AI, is you, you just type in a search box and the computer does all the rest. Well, of course, that doesn't really happen or it doesn't happen yet. So you, it's teaching, no, no, if you, you know, if you want to be able to address things, they, you've got to give the computer something to play with. Yeah. And yeah, I think exactly. that's what, yeah. what you're emerging here. Yeah, no, I, I, th I mean, Raphael, I completely agree with you in principle, but I think we need to be a bit casual in the beginning, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I'm totally on the side of simpler is better. <laughs> <But> <laughs> If, uh, if, for example, if you use the description box as the simple version, and if the person wants to spend a little bit more time structuring the information, then he can, you know, add the fields and define the fields. It's not either or, it's and. So you're basically saying that, at, at what you said earlier, is it that the way we have related websites plus, we can have this as a blah, blah, concept plus? Related definitions plus. No, 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 not related definitions. That has to come from here, I think. But mm -hmm. you know, in this thing where you do the this the specific keyword concepts, uh, you can just comma separate them. Oh yeah, yeah I have an idea. Um, what if we called it lists? Because each one of those sub areas that Mark had was basically a named list of some things, a list of affiliations, could be a list of favorite books, yeah. could be a list of degrees, whatever. Just how about a plus add list, and then the list would become a concept in its own right. Uh, I'm, let me think more about that. Um, so we're now going to export this to PDF to see how that weirdness that Mr. Anderson gave us. Let me just close all of these horrible things. Oh, right. So this, well, okay, let me get out of dark mode. It's a bit ridiculous because we're not used to it in here. Oops. Right, so that's what happened. And you can click on this and waste doesn't have an entry so it's a bit odd but anyway what so uh could you show us something else that's in there that in a sense does work so that we we know where we're heading for so one of the other entries presumably oh yours worked just fine oh, i see I, I think it did i mean you know it's tiny document so we do just select to here we get it it shows all the mm -hmm. stuff you have to scroll a little bit that's all yeah yeah and um, here it is. This is a slash and person that's being upgraded. That's you know, yeah. It will be this is colon. And of course, I am not a, ro I am not a robot. I should not. Yeah, you're not a number. Um, but these are supposed to be categories for something else. But we don't want to or over organize, right, guys? But I do I'm have. So sick of trying to prove my humanity by clicking on traffic lights. <laughs> There is a cartoon in that. So um, it would be really great, Raphael and Peter, if you send something similar. Um, don't forget, the point of it is 
to have a few things here of the kind right. of stuff you want to work on. That's really the key. Right. So Mark just gave us extra, and that's it. So it shows the system can support that without that being a problem. It also made me reflect on the fact that you know, um, I, whilst I wouldn't regard myself as entirely unskilled, it's very hard to define what my skills are because I don't work in a sector. I don't come from a you know, a, my my first profession is a long way back and not an active one anymore. But you know, it is lots of sort of data munging and uh, you know I, I was reflecting probably the most useful thing is that I'm probably have a higher tolerance than many non-programmers of sitting listening to someone talk about uh, you know formal structure that I know I can't do but to, you know but to be able to follow along you know without my mouth hanging open and that's quite useful when you're trying to do this mapping from what is the behind the scenes sort of organized um computer compatible view of the world. And, you know, most of us meet bags outside who just wanted to do stuff for us. Yeah, um, Mark, so this morning, oh, oh, yeah, first of all, Raphael and Peter, can you send me something similar? Yeah. Okay, it, it could even be in an email, it doesn't have to be in here. Um, I really wanna know if your interest overlap with a kind of a format or something like that. I wanna see lines going there, that's the primary. Mm -hmm. But um, this morning in our little uh, university group, we discussed amongst other things, the incredible weirdness that there's hardly any software organized for organizing documents. There are of course reference managers where they're bloated and expensive ways of doing things. And of course, photographers have Lightroom, et cetera, but very little. So what I've been uh, experimenting with today is this. And by this, I mean, <laughs> So just really want to hear what you guys have to say, because I have a meeting with ACM publishing again on Thursday. And if they implement add visual meta on download PDF, that is great. But un unless someone uses author right now, it is a very limited utility. And I obviously don't want just this to be a sales tool for author. It has to be a wider thing. Mm. So the idea is that if you have a document in reader, and it is given visual meta through whatever means, um, either pasting a DOI, pasting a bibtech, or typing it in manually, whatever. It will then automatically save it to a folder called library, let's say. And it will take the title of the document and make that the name of the document. It'll put the date created as the date created. It will of course also encode author's name, but it will put the authors into, um, this is, uh, hang on, it's kind of hidden under here. In comments, because there is no column for authors uh, on the finder. So if you change this to be, uh, hang on, sorry guys. Right, yeah, date created, size we don't need. Why is the date modified still? Well, I'm still a throwback to Catalina. Do you, um, where to find the comments go? Because they used to way back when they were in the resource fork, but I think Apple threw that under the bus a while back. So I'm just wondering where this metadata resides in terms of its, uh, its attachment to its related document. It is, and oh, it, that actually varies. We found out today. I was talking to Keith about this. But the idea is oh, that if you, um, you know, if we can have that kind of data, that means that essentially you can organize your documents in the finder, right? Um, yes. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, two two things related to that. Sorry, don't don't. But I'm I'm aware I tend to sort of, I'm terribly bad at judging conversational pause so don't let me trample on somebody um one is re often i don't rename documents because it's not, i suppose the easiest way to describe the sort of logic it's not my document and the name of the document may have a meaning in this context so if i call it something that is meaningful to me then actually I've broken something an important, effectively a bit of metadata that might be important in the context in which I worked. Uh, the, you know, that's just another human versus mechanical messiness. The other thing is occasionally where 
software or a process to be helpful will say, all right, we've got this. Oh, you haven't given this a title. I know what I'll do. I'll give the, I'll make the title the file name. Um, but that can often be very confusing because you can then get into the things. So, what do we, which is the which? You know, they're not necessarily the same. And which is which is the canonical one? You know, which, which is the one not to fiddle with? Um, so, in mapping one to the other, I think that's another nuance to to be aware of. Um, it, it's. It's, it seems trivial until it starts to bite. But as ever, as you get deeper into a project, you get into a messy set of data, oh, yeah, these sort of nuances can become important. I'm very I did a long blog rant about that, screaming about people who name their papers, paper.pdf, and their thesis, thesis.pdf, and their dissertation. Version one, version two, PDF. version final, final, version final, final, <laughs> the true final. Okay. Oh yes, I've Practice had those final. <laughs> Right, so on that note, um, we could just take the original document name and put it into the visual meta so you can always undo it. But so here's a document. The document is called agreement, lowercase a. I do command I on it. It says here, title, Microsoft Word hyphen document one, no spaces. Authors, Adrian, Ooh. right? Do you wanna know what this document is? What do you, could you guess what it is? It is actually the uh, official Good Friday Agreement oh, right, yeah. for Peace in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Wow. By Adrian, titled Microsoft Word <laughs> Document One. Mm. So let's not put too much, um, too much, you know, stock on, I mean, for you, Mark, don't forget, you're an anthropologist and an antiquarian. You know, you, you care about the old stuff, and, and that's absolutely fine. We shouldn't lose it. But in terms of the use for an average knowledge worker or student, um, they have basically nothing. No, you, you, you're you absolutely right. And the interesting thing here is what you're seeing is 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 a completely false mapping where what's happened is as, as we transition from uh, anything behind the curtain belonging to the IT department, um, what people have done is is mapped what what effectively is is two two completely different strands of paper. The fact that user Adrian did you know made this document or it was done by this uh, PostScript distiller is really not pertinent. It, it might be in another context and it might be very valuable to keep it, but it's probably not what most people would think of as that. And this was a point I was rather making this morning about metadata and just but we don't. Part of the problem is we don't we don't teach people what metadata is, whether we call it that or something else. We don't teach them what it is, and we don't teach them how to use it sensibly, and we don't give them any reasonable tools to do that. So what you're discussing here, I think, is you know in a sense pushing on an open door. Getting people to take it up will be uh, difficult, and I think that's going to take a lot of a lot of education. So it it actually has to be not only the tools, but but the explanation to get us each. You know, it'll take each of us a different amount of time or a different perspective to get to the point where we say, oh, I get what it is. That's whatever we think, you know, that we'll make the mental map. So, oh, I know how to do that. Or I, or I know the purpose of that. And now I know how to do it. Um, it's just that there isn't a particularly one size fits all for this. Well, I'm just thinking, I'm just being a bit desperate here because um, with the ACM people, I really need mm. there to be a benefit. And if part of the benefit is we can actually remap so people can see what their documents are. I mean, my father, yeah. when I tried to explain computer stuff to him, which never really went very well, he didn't understand why we call them files, because in the real world, files are actually folders. We should call them document, but we still call them files. But I guess the reality of that is they're actually bundles. It's just hidden from the user what's inside it, right? And then a document, you couldn't call a video file a document because otherwise that would conflict with documents being interpreted as text documents or things with words in them. Unless it opened up as a binder of frames that you could sort of flick through. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the questions of language, it's always troublesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. I get, I get your point for it. I'm just trying to think, okay, so what's, What's possible low-hanging fruit in the next couple of days 
Um, I, I still think that actually just having something that effectively is comparatively easily findable in terms of visual matter, just saying, you know, this is what this document is, is, is actually a remarkably useful tool. I mean, I, I think you're going to see the ACM, and I think the last time I had to do an, uh, an ECM paper, and I, uh, there's a company called Sheridan, I think you do it, and it's probably all written in Lisp or something so old. Um, I, I, it, it's, it's something that was done as a job lock contract probably 20 years ago, hardly been updated. And you're trying to do this thing at 23.59 on the submission time. And now it makes sense. Um, uh, and there isn't really, you know, there isn't simple um, entry of information. And that's perhaps one angle to look at, is to look at just how crummy some of the, the inputs are. Um, this has been shielded from, you know, the C-suite for a long time because some other poor person labouring the bowels of the of the building had to fix all that stuff so that by the time it was seen by, you know, senior people, it all, it all looked lovely, which just hides really appalling process design. Yeah, I think we would all agree on that. Um, what particular would you guys like to go through today? Um, we're in June. Yeah, we should probably look at uh, more book invitation things. Yeah, I feel like book and how's the symposium coming along? Is it, has it started <laughs> yet? <laughs> so I know you've been following the symposium for a while and I'm not sure if I'm going to ruin all your childhood dreams considering so young it must have started a while ago but the symposium <laughs> has incredibly little preparation okay even i can when, help with that okay good <laughs> thank you even when we do have face-to-face -face, uh, meetings it's basically find a room and either we get a sponsor or i get some lunch whatever um invite people they show up in an order and we're done it's really, really simple. Yeah, no, I've, I've been following the YouTube and the preparation. It's always, it always did seem like a small event of, you know, a small gathering. And that's totally fine. Um, I'm just saying that I've been organizing presentations for, for a long time. And if, if you want help with that, I can help with that. And, yeah, and also on, on the, the book side for, you know, both the you know, design organization things related to the book. Those are things that... But, think, yeah, that's really yeah. great. I think... Um, the last future of text we had was one of the absolute best because on zoom breakout rooms were fantastic because they're random you know so when we changed the format during the day to be more breakout room you know people really got into meeting new people they would never have had a cocktail with in a, in a physical mm -hmm. one of course so yeah we can put some extra effort in there but i think now we need to focus more on inviting and really getting the student competition out there mm -hmm. And Let's see, I'm pasting someone we might want to invite into the chat. Uh, there's a little bio blurb. And um, his specialty is designing domain specific languages. So it'd be really interesting to get his perspective. And let's see, I think I have his email. One second, I'll add that to the chat too. Could you email me about this person, please? That, that would make it easier for me to react to. I'm just pasting into the chat though for the others in case they're interested. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Okay, and then I will copy that out of the chat and send it to you by email right now. Thank you very much. And, and also, Fred, I'm saying this because uh, the symposium is, it's going to be the 10 year, right? 10 years of, of the symposium. And I think that's the best time to release the book, like the symposium, we have the talks and then we have the book. And it yeah, doesn't have to be all in a single day. We can stagger it over a week, like a whole week of either office hours every day or different talks with different people. Um, that way we have things to talk about, you know, as the, as the releases is happening. And then people can present, we can have like a day for demos, a day for office hours, you know, different days for different, topics and you know have a chance to talk with somebody from the book as well during during this okay meeting. you should have it now fraud yeah I, I got it thank you um and, Raquel, and, I think and then fred can go on a book signing tour afterwards 
Yeah, absolutely. International book signing tour. We did actually. Virtual book signing. Everyone <laughs> sign one of the books, mailing it through everyone and having it signed. Yeah. And everyone sign a sheet. Send, send page, me a photo you know? of your book and I will sign your photo of the book. <laughs> of the book. Yeah, we can do that. Then we can sell it to Vint. <laughs> layers of that. That would be fun. But um, yeah, the, the it's kind of bizarre because in and of itself, this is niche. End of story. We kind of accept that every couple of weeks and then we get a bit excited and we accept it again. However, uh, because of Twitter relatively recently, there have been more tools for thought kind of groups we've kind of overlapped with. Mm -hmm. So I think two things. One, yes, I agree. Let's do it over a week. We can have one gala day or whatever special day, but let's host a uh, specific and we can do it in different time zones as well. Maybe get somebody in Asia um, at the time. I think that's a very good idea, Raphael. And also um, what I would really, really like is for the book to be even more augmented than previous. But you know, enough that people get annoyed and say they'll do something. We've had a few of the contributors saying that they want to take the book into their environments and you know some of the people. And that's really, really nice, but it takes a long time for them to do it. It hasn't been delivered yet and that's fine. Um, so I was hoping we'd have like a um, liquid space or something for some of it, but it, it's really hard to make happen. You've but, said yeah. a couple of times that this is a niche community and I, I agree that it currently is um, because of the people that are involved. It's mostly more uh, academic related, more technical, more uh, related to solving things. But the question of text is extremely broad. We just have to, you know, make it so. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we can get people from all over, you know, different professions to, to talk about text. You know, we can have artists talking about text in art. We can have, you know, people that write poetry talking about text in poetry. So it's always text plus something. And what we have right now is text plus academia very well, text plus programs, text plus software, text plus documentation. We have you know, a lot of the technical aspects, but we, if we humanize it more, then we can have it, you know, all sorts of people talking about different perspectives related to text. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It is generally text plus, and we should go into wider fields for that. Um, hang on a second. Just yeah, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I'm just thinking your comment. I was just reflecting on your comment. You're saying, well, you know, we, we seem to there seem to be some overlap with, you know, various other small circles uh, in Twitter. Well, maybe that's something we should map in the loose in in a very loose sense. Because another interesting thing about this um, sort of broad grouping we're bringing together is is actually giving some light to some of those and potentially making new cross connections between them, especially uh, if those connections are, you know, not, not equally niche. So in other words, it's not finding two lots of people who are doing so much, you know, very ordered data structures or something, but people who are doing very ordered data structures and people who really need data structures and perhaps don't know it. And that's some of the really useful stuff that may, maybe we could perhaps do. In, and in a sense, wouldn't it you know, be lovely to see coming out of a wider community. I mean, I know it's always an aspiration, and but but all you know, one can but try. Yeah. Well, let's go through another uh, round of inviting people. Then that should be the first thing. Um, I have a few names that I want to invite again. Um, but what are you thinking about, guys? Uh, anyone specific else? Uh Actually, someone else. I do. Have you come across Ted Goranson? Isn't he a football uh, guy? He, uh, you might. You might have come. He used to write a lovely thing for um, uh, about about this particular organizer for the about this particular Mac blog way back when. Uh, but he's still around. He's doing stuff. Uh, his, his wife Beth Cuddy. They're doing stuff in Australia, and they were looking at. Um, uh, understanding narrative in video and stuff, but he, he's he's been around a while. He's sort of interesting a, a relationship with Texas. He was doing stuff uh, for Beltway organizations uh, to do with understanding text and things. I might just have 
you know, he's he's thrown plenty of sort of left field ideas in front of me when I've done odd tinderbox stuff for him along the way. I might I might put a fly over him, see whether he's interested. Okay. Uh, you have a few when more names. People, That's your when I think about people to invite, I I immediately look at the bookshelf and see mm. all of these people, everybody behind you, Frode. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's most of the first book was quite simply, I'm reading a book. This is interesting. Get in touch with the author and see if they're interested. Yeah. Well, here's an interesting thought. I mean, channeling what Raphael just said, you know, someone whose name keeps constantly marching across my screen is uh, um, Alberto Caro, who has been doing stuff in sort of uh, data viz. He's... Was he basically was in newspapers? He was worked for one of the big Brazilian newspapers for a bit, then moved up to Miami, and he now works at the University of Miami. What's his name? Um, Alberto Cairo. Um, sorry, I'm just fetching because you might just recognize he, journalist, designer, information designer. Don't worry, this isn't a book sales. It's just you might have seen. I think that was the first one. He, sorry, that was the first one he wrote. The functional art. Uh, his most race. His most recent book is is uh, this. Yeah, how charts lie. I found that. But it's a it's a you know in the sense of another angle on um, text. It's quite interesting because you you know it's sort of uh, text and journalism and imagery and how and 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 now you know and how those coalesce in technical things. Um, he's that as busy at sit as sin, but my. <laughs> My experience is, um, you know, the busiest people are often the ones who'll pick up the phones sort and of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ah. One of the things we really talked about is kind of um, the, the composition of the email and the landing page. So we have um, made some progress there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Peter just had a observation uh, yeah i was just gonna ask if you could hold those two books up steady long enough for me to grab a screenshot of the cover <laughs> there, there are three that's okay. the second book on how charts lie that i've seen i think the first one is how to lie with data I think oh we, uh yes how to lie with maps mark, mark my money there's been, there's been through about three I can get that off the shelf if you want. <laughs> and then um, I can't remember which order you, the, 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 you know, the record will show. Um, they are quite nice, actually. And they're, I mean, there's that's vast amount of books in this space, but I do think in, he's someone who's, who's clearly- I win. <laughs> no more books. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that it keeps, I, I've seen that. Uh, this was- your... It's a little animation, right? A little. It was Freud's and... Freud's birthday present. I gave him that. I gave him that in the Giving Tree, which you may well you'll remember if you've seen it. They're they're lovely books. I've seen that book. It's nice. and the tree keeps getting. You know, the children want the fruit, and then they want the branches to build a house, and then they want to cut the trunk down to make a boat. You know, and in the end, the the, the children come back old and grey and sit on the stump and are happy. It's, it's just a nice little tale that you know. I thought Edgar might enjoy as he gets older. I started reading something else for uh, because of Edgar today, the history of Jesus, because he's going to a relatively religious school and there's all kinds of Jesus references coming at him. And I don't mind that, but I do want to be able to have some um, framework. I don't want him to just think of baby Jesus in a very abstract way. You know, it should be a tool for him to to learn his morality around rather than dictated. Anyway, different topic. Oh, yeah. I agree on that, by the way. It's, uh, it, it's good to know that there are many <laughs> higher beings uh, portrayed in different religions. Well, also, let's not forget that Jesus was a Jew, and for as long as he lived, he was a Jew. There was no Christianity until he was dead and, well, buried and reborn or whatever you choose to interpret it. But it was Paul who invented Christianity. Um, you know, and the, the you know, what did Muhammad do when he went to heaven? He went to see Jesus. You know, these are such fundamental things that should just quash any nonsense conflict. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, and also the, it was really weird today to learn that uh, John the Baptist 
was actually a relative of Jesus's mom. And he was just a few months older, but Jesus followed him to kind of learn the trade of being a preacher guy and got baptized by him. And then he decided to do his own thing. And because he had this little miracle trick, he got more people. <laughs> Nepotism, nothing new under the sun there. <laughs> well, God did bring his son down. So yes, if you take um, that interpretation. Anyway. I, I, I was thinking of a sort of subjects and areas. Um, uh, graphic art, comic novels, mixture of uh, illustration and quite interesting medium. And uh, if you get, if you look beyond getting hung up on, um, you know, the fact it's a comic. Um, I, I mean, I love, I love um, Scott McLeod's understanding comic. Yeah. I have invited him before. Yeah. Um, but hang on, before we just throw out names, yeah. not that that's at all a bad thing to do. So here we have a, a page that uh, Raphael and I've gone through a little bit. It's quite short, mm -hmm. so I'll give you the link okay. as well. So you can see it without just um, uh, weird hair. Hang on, there we go, chat. This is not a public page, of course. So should we just bung this into an email? Let's see what that looks like. Oh, you got things on top. Yeah, to lots of things. <laughs> So this will obviously have to be a few links, but yeah, field four. How should we present this? We kind of need to agree. Hang on, maybe what we do is we put. Um... No, sorry, the thing here, the zoom bar. One second, okay. So I think you, one of the problems is you've got to go, you've got sort of, we're having to overcome three different things. They're the, there's either the people who are sort of fairly early stage in whatever they're doing, which is who have the sort of, I'm not worthy reaction. So are you sure, I'm, that's all that's rather overcoming. You've got the I'm too worthy reaction in that, why should I waste my time on, you know, I'm far too important to do this. Oh, the other people say, well, what's the point? Um, which are all fair questions. Um, but it's yeah it's hard to sort of put over because to a certain extent the way to make sense of it is to look at what's been done before so i think right now that um uh, that landing page is for need people more who pictures, have been, i know people that have been invited um i think it, it looks to me like it's two emails. Uh, one should be um, hello, you know, introduction. We have, you know, we have this book, we have this community, we have this symposium, uh, and we're looking for other people to collaborate and your work seems interesting. You know, I feel like that would be one email. And then the second one would be, uh, you know, the guidelines of how how they can contribute, how many words, when they have to, to, uh, to deliver it by, you know, all of the, the FAQ and, and specs related to more, more going into, you know, the book itself and what they have to send in what format, all those things. So I would have that first email, like, um, you know, uh, the, probably the, the introduction would be something customized. Uh, so for yeah, example, yeah, for yeah. Scott, for Scott McLeod, it would be, Scott, you're a huge reference, you know, your, your, your comics, you know, the things you've written have been very influential. And, you know, I would like to introduce what we're doing on the future of text. And we feel like you would be an incredible person to collaborate. Are you interested? And then I think since it is a passion project, I think that has to come right in the beginning, like, in, in, you know, after the custom introduction, um, we have this community of passionate people working around text where we have this book, we have the symposium, we have, you know, the community and circle, and then, and then the book. It's an interesting thing, just this interrupt, I'll talk, and, and uh, is this thing, a, and I think one of the other things in this day and age when everyone's feeling so sort of busy and oppressed is, is saying that the main thing you're giving is your voice. 
So you, you, th there's no requirement on you. This isn't, you know, you've got to, you know, you've got to sign up and do this forever sort of thing. Um, so what we're really asking is for your, you know, your, how the board put it, but you know, your, your own distinctiveness to be joined to our own. You know, we want extra voices and saying to people, we think, you know, you will be able to contribute something to that, which I think breaks out of the thing of saying, oh, right, I've just, this feels vaguely like homework. Because it will be, because we, you know, anything I put in my to-do list is something I hadn't planned to do before. So yeah, it is homework, but but hopefully it should be fun homework. And it's also a chance, I think, for people to speak with as much honesty as they feel they can have about something that's close to their heart in terms of text. Yeah. Well, we, sorry, and I apologize for holding up another book, but it's only because it, 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 Fred, did I show you this guy, Nick Susanis? Block. I think this first is the first block. graphic, uh, first graphic PhD. Room, remove report. Sorry, yes. So this guy, I think, is the first, you know, uh, as it happens, but you know, just, just by as it happens, I think this is the first thing that was accepted as a thesis that's written in the form of a graphic work. Um, but it's sort of talking about um, text, amongst other things, or an interrelation with it. So I don't know. That's somebody else that... If, if, would... if you want to put that in an email, yeah, that's really great. I, absolutely, I can do that. Yeah, I, and I'll put Alberto Carr as the name in the email to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, could you see, see me on that email? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So let's, let's nail this email. Name, custom intro as to why we like them. And then straight up what we're asking, right? Yes, but be before the volume two, we have to introduce the volume one. Um, uh, I don't think so, because right after, uh, you uh, know. We have the first volume was published last year, okay? Hang on, what's going on with that? Is that just on my screen, yeah? Is that but dust, in, in yeah, that was dust, <laughs> funny. Yeah. The, one of the last paragraphs, Frode, uh, right. the future of text, the book is part of a wider dialogue around the future of text. I think that should come um, earlier. Okay. Um, so let's just, um, why, um, these are our notes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Spider thing. Uh, do we have a? F oh yeah, we have a for who. Which is this, together this is with what useful. it is. Is this useful? No, that would be in the second email, I think, even the, the next paragraph. Um, but the beginning part is good. Uh, this is a passion project. I think you know, that part needs to be here. Something like that. Mm -hmm. and... This is a nice sentence that we took from um, somewhere else. I think we can move that to here. Yeah, after. Mm -hmm. And then what it is um, that passion project should come right before the first volume. You know, like this is a passion project that involves this and this and this, and then the first volume was produced last year. I don't have the passion product project anymore. No, sorry. 
copy across the um sorry so do you want me to bring that back just the first just to the first period up to the first period so where do you think this should go uh, on what it is well i'm afraid i have an appointment so i'm gonna have to head out now okay you're, you're gonna miss the boring bit so that's fine <laughs> i'm uh, peter I'll, I'll cc you on the email okay thanks a lot mark have a great week guys Bye. and you See you later, Peter. Bye. -bye. Bye. So, on, for, for example, after that, we would like to invite you. Um, I feel like we need one small sentence just saying, the future of text is this, this, and this. And then the book is this, the symposium uh, hang, is hang this, on. the take, community take, take is this. Slow. Take it slow. Um, what was the first thing? Is that so, referring to this? Um, yes. Uh, after after the custom intro, yeah, um, there should be a, a, a small introduction for, you know, the future of text. Question project. And then that involves the community, the symposium, and the book. Those are the three things um, that we have related, you know, to talking about text. And then. We talk about hang on, don't, don't, don't do so much and then um, write down if you if you have to the next bit but let's just nail this bit okay the first one for the mission last in the so we're not just inviting them to the book. Shouldn't we invite them to the book and have the other stuff as kind of a surround? Yeah, but if, if my feeling is that if you invite me to a book, the book is the most important thing. And while it is, you know, a physical copy we can show people around, uh, it's not, I don't feel like it's the main thing. I, I feel like the discussion is the main thing. Hello, little Edgar. <laughs> You want to tell them you did ballet today? I did ballet. Was it nice? Yeah. Are you going to go outside nice. for swim now? Mm, mm, no. Welcome here. Let me give you a kiss. I'm going to give you a kiss. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we would like to invite you to be part of the future of text, a passionate project culminating in a decade of um, discussions, uh, conversations. Because it, 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 I feel like if somebody is inviting me to a book, if I didn't know, you know, the future of text from the symposiums, and, and um, I would think that it's, you know, it's a commercial book, and I feel like that has to be expressed sure. right at the beginning. So the book is part of this whole, and that's okay. why it's a passion project. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's a good point you make, Raphael. It's also the fact, so, so, so that, you know, the downside is you don't make anything of it. The upside is you don't have to do anything except state of view. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and we I, would like your collaboration. <laughs> and I think it's also free. I, I mean, another aspect that doesn't necessarily go in here, but might go into our wider notes is the fact that, you know, uh, unless you are in, in, in the very particular position where you're in an organization that very controls what you may say, you know, this is an opportunity for you to say what you think rather okay. than that, that's you somewhere think. else. That, that's somewhere else. Let's take stuff. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I'm not, not in here. Yeah. But. Okay. So <laughs> we would like to invite you to be a part of the future of text. I don't think that's strong enough. We, we must say contribute an article to the book, right? Mm -hmm. Because people can get really annoyed if they don't know what it what they're actually being asked. That should be right. <laughs> and then uh, we need they're to definitely do being asked to to write for the book. Yeah, but here but it doesn't even book. say it's a book because the first volume, I think this is where we should put in the passion project thing. Okay. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We would like to invite you to be part of. Um, okay, so let, let's just have a look at this bump. Uh, the first volume was published last year, blah, blah, blah. 
this is a fashion um, the yeah that works yeah i mean i mean it's partly it's to capture it's to capture a wide perspective of so one of the things I was just thinking as you were typing, you know, well, what's it doing? One of the things it's doing is, is something that doesn't happen elsewhere, which is to get a very wide um, take on this sort of broad stratum of text. And I, I would say the book is a passion project with a wider dialogue instead of just this is a passion project. Because the wider dialogue involves a lot of other things. <clears throat> right, so here we have, we would like to invite you to this thing. This thing started last year. You can learn yes. more about it. You could be an excellent addition to the second volume, making it explicit. Passion, 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 community dialogue, why it's important. Mm -hmm. Your contribution will be immense. Answer any questions, but look here as well if you want to see specifics. Yeah, I think that that works. So now that we have done this, I think we should uh, change this page. Oh, what is going on? I, this alarm comes on every once in a while and I don't have an alarm. Very weird, right. So Maybe this it's page- to buy more books. <laughs> hmm. You have not bought a book for one hour. <laughs> don't say that. Exactly. My wife will think that that's an guidelines. actual thing. That's right. So th this is no longer an invitation. This is a thank you for, for considering. considering. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, on the email, uh, you have you can find out more about on Future Text Publishing. Um, should we make it explicit that they can download the first volume for free on the website? That way they can they can look at the contents. So you can you can read about the book on Goodreads and Amazon as well as our site, comma, where you can download the the book in PDF. Or you know, formats. Wait, is it the future of text publishing or is it future text publishing? I always I always get the links wrong. It's future text publishing. Glad I caught yeah, that. Futuretextpublishing.com. That was embarrassing. But could shouldn't you make the link this link? which is the, the download link. There's different informations on. on yeah, so, so what I've done is, I'm gonna change the name of this page right now, the URL, uh, <laughs> because it is something else now. Mm -hmm. uh, hang on. So where's uh, contribution? Oh, it's already changed here. But let's nice. do a quick edit. So, not invitation, contribution guidelines. Oops. Um, so update.
Does that make sense now? First link is to the guidelines and second one is to the general. Sorry about that. Does that make sense, Raphael? I feel that you can download the book. It, it should go up because uh, right after the second volume on the first paragraph, because so they can right. read I have the link, but I should give a. Uh... Yeah. No, you can. Uh, the, there, no? you're, you're suck, you know, sucking up to them is here anyway, so we don't need the previous one. Okay. Got it. Yeah. No, yeah. You should end with <laughs> sucking up to them, I guess. <laughs> that makes more sense. So on the contribution guidelines, let's so. These are now links on here. Mm-hmm. And then on that page, we would have the FAQ. Um, but is that a link to the submission guidelines? There's a, another submission guideline, guidelines down there. Yeah, that's something else. Okay. Let, let's see and, and take that into this page now. Got it. This is that's more listy. Thank you. So I will, how about this? I rename it format or something like that. Just, why don't you just put everything in one page? Because, because it, th th this is it's still a little bit about why it's great in invitation and context. The other one is more, oh, okay, that format. Oh, that many words. It's, it's quite listy. Okay. Um, in that in that sense, um, I'd almost be tempted to rather than have something quite formal like submission guidelines. And so, uh, you know, just thinking back to some of Rafael's earlier comments, maybe just make it a, a bit less formal in the sense of saying, uh, well, not necessarily you could call this page submission guidelines or submission format, but it's more that the link to it on the main thing is is it because why am I going to look at this page? It's because so what does what does this mean? What 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 am I actually going to do? And it's probably capturing it, it in that sort of terminology. Does that make sense? Something like document format or something. Um. No, no, well, I was thinking more in the sense of capturing it, it, it's almost capturing it in the English one uses is what you know the question that's in their mind. Okay, so if I'm going to do this, what does this you know, what does this look like? What does it mean? Um, because that, i.e., yeah, yeah, what does it, you know, so, so what should I call this then? Um, I think it will be something along uh, without going for the short version yet. Uh, it's encapsulating the idea. So, so, what am I? What am I signing up to do? You know, what? 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 What is the outcome of what? What I, I'm? I'm. I'm about to agree to do if I agree to do it. But that. That. I think that's kind of covered here. No, no, no. That's. The, it's a different aspect. This is. What does it look? What? That's the first bit. Is the why? This is okay. So, 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 what does that actually mean? But it's put. It's. No, but that's also a little bit here about the thousand words and deadline. This really is about the document format. Mm -hmm. So should we call it uh, submission criteria or document format or? Oh, we lost him for a minute. Okay, Rafael, quick, we can do this before he can disagree with us. <laughs> um, I think it should be, yeah, on the article format where, or the contribution guidelines, um, if you're, if you would like to see some examples, you know, go back to that page where you can download the book. And I would, we need to study something, Frode, how we can reuse the text from the first book as individual pieces. 
to keep you no know, publication going or to keep remembering people that this exists. Art, you're calling me. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, we, we do need a page that just quite simply lists how many words, what document format and stuff like no, that, right? Definitely, yes. So what do we call it? I'm okay with submission guidelines. Um, no, it, but we have contribution seem... guidelines. Contribution guidelines, and then the article format. format. Just article There's format the, is good. We have the email. Then we have should it be called contribute con or contributors welcome? Maybe contributors welcome. Contri contributors guide, just guide. Contribution guide or contributors. Contributor guide. Thank you for considering being part. The first volume is published with contributors. Download for less contributors. One celebration. Future text is not remaining. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, what do we call this? Article format? Frequently, just call it frequently asked questions. Article frequent article FAQ or FAQ I coming up with names. That's why people get people in marketing get paid a lot to think of names <laughs> and titles and subtitles. That too long. Uh, I think that should go. Shouldn't it go up from go up a little bit on the top of the page? So you have. Um, well, the, the structure is welcome and information. Then we have volume two. We're making it passion. Here's the stuff you need to give us the right format, and then finally more wider context. Okay, that's good. So that way we have the email to introduce and then we have, you know, after they reply, we just send them the link to this page. That would be kind of yeah. the format. I haven't used WordPress in so long and, and I'm looking at you using it and everything is completely different. Like the interface is a lot better than it needs to be. It's still far from perfect. Um, no, definitely. I'm going to change the, I'm going to call this contributors guide now. So that means I need to go back out uh, all the way here. What, contributors? Oh, that's something else. Contributors guide. Okay, so what did we say we want to call it? Contributors, Contributors guide, right? Contributors guide. You have to change the slug. It, it has changed it already. No, oh, oh contr I wasn't paying attention. Oh, what am I doing? Correct. So now I'll put that in here. There you go. Okay, so this thing here is, are we sure we want to call it? Uh, so it, it isn't an FAQ yet. I think we can easily add an FAQ over time, but I think this is just article format for submission. I think it's that dry. Can we leave that for, for now? Or can we find a different name? Mm, you see, let me let me look for synonyms for. Guidelines, because. 
it, it's a word I use a lot and I like it, <laughs> but I, I can see how it might feel too, too formal. Um, guidance, ground rule, code, protocol, instruction. Well, so this is now just contributors guide. Or, or may, uh -huh. Maybe we make it contributors welcome then. And the other one is guidelines. Yeah. Contributors guide should be contributor guide. Then that way we have welcome and guide, right? Something like that, because it really should say this is about the specific piece. It, it, this is yeah. already a bit of a guideline, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, I. It's sort of it, that's the one that gives you a thing that oh well if you want to know how many words or whether it's got to be in Sanskrit or something it's going to be on that link rather than in this bit. That's the that's the uh, the separation that I think you're making. Yeah. So contributors guide we're going to put editor contrib. Welcome. Contributors welcome. So we're, we're happy with that, right? Yeah. We need to change that. Why didn't I change the... Funny because these URLs people will actually read them. So this one then. So this is contributors welcome, and this is contributor article guide. It's very clunky, and I know I'm I made the clunky. Come on, guys, what have you got? I was just thinking, oh, we could just do it like Reader's Digest. You have been pre-enrolled for the next the next volume <laughs> of our future of text. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I shouldn't jest really. <laughs> Article guideline or contributions guideline? Article guideline? Yeah, maybe what we need is just like we have, we've prepared some. Um, because it is we yes. prepared some guidelines to help you um, if if you're if you want to know how the format is being used. Yes, yeah, probably rather, than, rather than a big link in the middle of the page, it's almost I think you'd have a short sentence that says and we prepared a few guidelines for you. Yeah, please take a look at and the guidelines is the link. And I think that 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 sort of um, that will get you to that page and will sort of you don't have to get I don't know. It, it, there's less of a commitment to pressing the link in a way. If that was, ju if it just says, you know, where you've got article guideline. If you just said, you know, it, it, if you, if you're interested in submitting, we prepared a few guidelines as to what your article. I don't think we should do a sentence because people don't really read these things. They're hard to read. Okay. Read but you, can, you can put both. I mean, I well, that's the other thing is you could always have the, you know, in a sense, the formal link for the people who are looking for, you know, where do I click to find X. No, but I mean, it's such it's such an important thing. Everybody will ask for it, you know. And, or, yeah. or some here's the balance. We actually want the specific format this time. Make it bigger. <laughs> well, so here this thing here we can actually cut and put into the guideline, right? I see Mark nodding. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm. Uh, so I'll let's just that. do that. And then uh, put that as, as the header. Yes. Yeah, this is much more polite. And then on this one, uh, we have this dangly bit. Uh, we need to get rid of this. Do, do we need this on this page? No, that's uh, that's for the email you put yeah. in the email. Yeah. 
Yeah, we can keep that up. Okay, do you guys want to have a look on your own screens, see how it feels? Yeah. I'll send you that link. It's changed a few times now. I suppose if we go in with the zeitgeist, it should have a picture of a dot, a puppy or a kitten at the bottom. Don't say that, Emily's in the room. Team. Emily, there was no talk of puppies. Mark is just a bit weird. Contributors welcome should be capitalized. Excuse me, exclamation mark, or not? Uh, mm, uh, reload. I made it exclamation. See if it's too friendly or not. Uh, I think exclamation mark actually is a. Uh, it's, yes, and it's um, <laughs> it's veering into sales copy. It's, There's an explained it's, video talking about the exclamation mark that I love it. Mm. You could use an interrobang if you want to bring in the text people. <laughs> All right. Okay, I've removed it. Launch celebration. Does that need to be on the contributors? Welcome. It doesn't, does it? No. Yeah. Well, but it's linked from the front page anyway. Mm. You know, they weren't there and it wasn't that big a party. It was good, but what do you, yeah, no. And also, should I, if, let me share screen again. Do you You're think- You're writing all the multimedia things. <laughs> uh, that's in the, the launch day, you mean? Yeah. Uh, no, we're not hiding it because when you go to the page in a normal way, you, you will see that it's right there. Hmm. I don't. I don't think we should have too many duplicated links. I mean, the acid yeah. test also is to just is just to find someone who knows how to use a web page. Just ask to, you know to click it because to a certain extent, the three of us standing here, are, you know, will probably guess wrongly as to which one they'll they'll, they'll misunderstand. It's just the nature of doing this. Um, I, d I, d I was wondering when, as I looked at the page cold, you know, so reading it as a page. Um, it's the fact that, so uh, you're in part of the volume of text two, and that, but we don't talk about that until the second heading. Um, so I've read this other stuff. So where, where are is you? that launch, uh, launch celebration version one, for instance? So I'm just wondering. Hang on, where are you, Mark, on this page? Sorry, I'm looking at contributors welcome, I do apologize. Okay. So uh, if you, the, the, first, the first sentence, the same for considering part of the future text volume two, which doesn't actually start until where your cursor is, which is two paragraphs down. So that might just be slightly confusing. Bearing in mind, we, we understand the content, but the reader doesn't at this point. Well, we don't have to have volume two heading here. No, that's not the point. That, that's I, not- no, I know, but I, I, I don't, I think it makes it too chunky, just doing, uh, doing that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um... I love single page websites because they just scroll to the section you need to go to. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this formatting bar. I don't think we need this heading either. Can I get rid of it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, please have a look at the page. No. Mm -hmm. In the in the second, oh, sorry, in the third paragraph, is the opening of the sentence a deliberate pun, or are we saying, you know, effectively text apostrophe s text's future has not been written? The future of text has not been written. Yeah, but it's also the name of the book. So yeah. I, if I wasn't making a deliberate play on words, I would say uh, text apostrophe S, text future has not yet been written. Just a thought. The future of texts, is that what you mean? No, no, no. The book is called The Future oh, of Text. Yes. And I, I just, I was, 
again, th this is the thing, is I read it cold on the page. They, uh, okay, so this, well, of course it's not been written because I haven't contributed yet. So you're conflating. So unless you, 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 unless you want to make a very deliberate play, play on words, I would just turn that phrase round. Right, and how would you, you say not it? So you say, uh, you could say, instead of the future of text, you can say capital T text, apostrophe S, future has not yet been written. Or, you know, the ultimate future of text is not yet known uh, or something like that. But it's, it, it's just, it, when I read it cold, it just, it looked like I was reading the title of the book. And then the next phrase confused me. How about just this? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I actually, because I'm so into it, I had not actually noticed that, of course, that's the title of the book that has fixed it, <laughs> but there you go. So we don't have that in the email, right? Yes, you do. Fourth, uh, sorry, uh, down a bit. There yeah. you go. Yep. Should we just remove it here then? No, I thought I no, it's fine. It's just no, no, it's, it's in the email. I mean, oh, I see. Uh, Rafael, what do you think? Get rid of this since we um, have it in the email. I, I I'd be tempted to keep yeah. that rather than the one after it in on the page. Yeah, because we don't have that in the email. Right, okay. So yeah, I, I think this is a good balance. This is a bit more invitational. This is a mm -hmm. bit more factual. Activity based. Cool, we're making progress. Okay, um, I'm gonna go make dinner for the family. I will email you this e uh, email, guys. Yeah. Uh, you can good. also use it should you want to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are the, the core people working on this, so if there's someone you want to invite, uh, you know, you don't need to have a long discussion or whatever, but if you tell me first, just in case I've already invited that people maybe before, that, that would be all. I'll, um, as you asked, uh, Fred, I'll send you those couple of names and I'll, and Peter wanted me to put CC, I'll put Raphael on as well, because what I'll do is also I'll drop a link in to a page I'm just about to put on my web server that links to my Amazon recommended pages, which is pretty much all the book, you know, has all these books I've been showing in there. So, you know, fill your boots, you can wander around. I know it's Amazon, other vendors are available, but the main point is, yeah. uh, apart from the thing, the one or two that Amazon doesn't show or one that shows us for some reason, an HP printer cartridge, um, uh, you know, it's a way to find stuff. Excellent. I look forward to Friday and I'm very, very grateful for this, guys. Thank you very, very yeah, much. Okay. And starting in next week, I'll be a little bit more free. So um, I want to help out on, you know, organizing things so that we don't leave it to the last minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look forward to that. Uh, I need organization, if anything, for sure. Bye, guys. <laughs> all right. See you all Friday. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye.